Bravo Oui Innovation Et voilà toute l'équipe ici On les a tous I'd like to begin by introducing all the people who are present here. But before I actually start with the introductions, uh, I'd like to refer to the people in the front row who worked on the film. They also deserve applause. On the far left, Michel Berchtat. Côté, euh, Marie Carolina, Marie -Carolina Terzi. Et son collègue Carlos Stella. Carlos même Stella. Production. Same production company. À côté de lui, l'autre star du film. The other star in the film. Aurora Quattrochi. Aurora Quattrochi. And other actors, Artem. Emmanuel Palombo. Emmanuel Palombo. Sofia Essedi. Sofia Essedi. And Delo Masia. It goes without saying that if you have a burning question for the people I've just introduced, don't hesitate, don't feel shy. And now, at the table here, we have on the left Angelo Lodiza, co-producer. Gianpaolo Letta, producer. Luciano Stella. Luciano Stella, next to me, producer. Roberto Sessa, producer. We also have actors up here at the far end. Tommaso Ragno. Tommaso Ragno, il était dans un film l'an dernier. He was in a film last year here by Nanni Moretti, Trepiani. Et aussi dans Heureux comme Lazzaro, and Happy as Lazzaro, and the last film of Bertolucci to be in Cannes in 2012. À côté de lui, Francesco Francesco Di Leva. Alors vous l'avez vu, si vous connaissez bien la filmographie de Mario Martone, il avait un rôle important. He had an important part in a film which wasn't released in France. You can only see it in the festival, The Mayor of Rione Sanita. Alors dans les acteurs, je ne vous présente plus, mais si I don't need to introduce you really, but we have uh, Pierre Francesco Favino here. who has uh, worked with the greatest Italian producers. And three years ago, he was in Cannes with uh, Marco Bellocchio's film. And uh, he got the equivalent of a French Caesar for uh, his part in that film. We also have the scriptwriter, Ippolita Di Maio.
Hippolyta, a Hippolyta wrote with Mario Martoni all his films since uh, 95 with Troubling Love. And then, of course, we have Mario Martoni. You're in Cannes for the third time. After uh, Troubling Love in 95, rehearsals for war in 98, the death of a Neapolitan mathematician was a huge success in France. Uh, and since that time, he's had a whole career which uh, has reached a peak, perhaps, uh, with nostalgia this year. I'd like to ask him my first question, and then, of course, there will be further ones. This film is an adaptation of a novel by Hermano Ria, and I'd like to ask why you decided to adapt this novel. I'll be speaking in Italian. When I read this novel, Nostalgia, I found something mysterious in it, a feeling of mystery which has stayed with me throughout the preparation of the script and uh, while shooting the film. This is something we all sense. This mystery was constantly present and it always guided us in our work. It's a magic novel, just like the district in the film. It's not a film about Naples. This is a film about a special district in Naples, a sanita, which is a, a real enclave within Naples. You can visit the district in a superficial way or on the surface, but there also is a sort of an underground city, a whole maze, which you can see, and this symbolizes the maze or the labyrinth of the characters. You have uh, the maze in the district, La Sanita, and it's hard to find your way out of the maze. And then you have the characters. Felice, for example, goes around the district, and then you have the internal maze within that person. Everyone has a past, a past which is not a straight line. Our individual past uh, is made of choices, mistakes, uh, decisions which are erroneous, missed out occasions. We're all a labyrinth or a maze. And you can enter the maze and uh, stay within it or try and find your way out and move forward. In life, you always uh, look back on your past uh, and on this maze, and that's exactly what the character Felici does in the film. Congratulations on your film. I didn't read the novel. I'd like to know whether you adapted it uh, in a faithful way or whether you changed it a lot. And I have a question to the two actors, Pier Francesco and Tommaso. How did you get under the skin of your characters? You are quite sentimental in the film while being uh, deeply bound up with the plot. And I'd like to congratulate you on the parts that you played, including that of the mother. You all have wonderful characters to portray. I'm sure there'll be uh, Best Actor Awards here. We adapted the novel in a fairly faithful way. There's a plot. That's the history, the story you see in the film. You have this uh, great friendship and the idea of going back to one's uh, childhood city as a way of uh, going back to one's uh, initial self. The author, Hermano Rea, has a very complex way of writing. The novel is full of digressions, which focus on social aspects. For our part, 
We didn't include all this in our plot, in our story. But everything you have in the novel is somehow reflected in the film. The film is really our way of viewing the novel. We wanted to keep the main parts of the novel, highlighting the main characters and everything that Hermano Rea depicts in his wonderful novel. It's rare to have such nuanced parts. I thought it was a story of friendship and love. But it is a return to one's past at the same time. When I watch the film, I think he believes in love and friendship right up to the end. It wasn't difficult, therefore, to play this part. He's not really a traitor. We're talking about friendship, above all. This young 15-year-old child starts out on a new life and then goes back uh, to his initial existence, to the point where he gave up his first life. He wants to return to that point. Do you remember when you were 15 years old and you had a best friend, a best friend who was inseparable, uh, who represents your better half, is the person perhaps you'd like to be? And when we play this scene, for me, it was both easy and difficult at the same time. It was difficult. Uh, to put all this into just a 10-minute scene, to say everything we wanted to say to each other as friends. Life separated us. Destiny, at a given point in time, uh, separated us. And it was a very, very powerful moment for me. It was more a question of emotions than actual thoughts. When I watched the film, the feeling I have is that I was guided a bit like the character by emotions only. I was surprised even during the shooting of the film. And I'm surprised to, to see myself in the film because uh, uh, we were given great freedom as an artist, as an actor. And that's quite rare. It's so fortunate to be able to work in this way. You have to set aside everything you know how to do and just let yourself be swept away by emotions like Felice. Tommaso? Tommaso? Tommaso. Same question. Same question. Un momento, scusate perché... Ecco, grazie. Eh, chiedo scusa. Eh, ma eh, con Mario abbiamo parlato molto quando... We talked uh, about this a lot with Mario Martone when he spoke to me about this uh, character. It's not that I was afraid that I wouldn't be up to scratch. Uh, I didn't really know where to start. Here we're dealing with a sort of a myth. It's a bit like a Greek tragedy, this film. What really struck me when I wrote, read the script was that I had read Hermano Rea's book, but in the novel, what really struck me, as in the film, is that we had to uh, depict all the emotions in the novel, and the film took on a life of its own. It wasn't absolutely necessary to have read the novel, in fact. So that's how I went about things. I. Uh, did things as though I'd never read the book. I just focused on the film. I also thought a great deal about myths. That's very important. 
There's something impossible in this business. We've talked a lot about instinct. I began to work with Mario in the theater a few years ago. And at the time, we spoke a lot about Greek tragedies. There's something very mysterious, something you can't put your finger on, something that's bound up with the emotions within a given family. I've always been keenly interested in Mario Martoni's work, and that's what I tried to do. I tried not to be rational about things. I didn't want to think things through too much. I just wanted my acting to be based on emotions. I can't really say things in a rational way because uh, everything changes from one film or from, from one character to another. I live in Rome, which is a city where there are a lot of ruins. When I'm visiting Servine, I always imagine the other side of things. There's one thing which was very important, and it wasn't secondary in any way. It consisted in meeting an actor like Pier Francesco Favino. I knew him, but this time I was able really to work with him on the set. It was a, a very emotional experience, something I can't really put words to. The character and his life story, and here I'm talking about uh, when I read the script for the first time and not including what we imagined subsequently. So as of the first reading, I tried to put myself in a position, in the position of the character called Felice, in fact. I immediately thought that this was a tremendous love story. It's not so much a question of friendship. It's something that goes far beyond just friendship and uh, acquires the status practically of a myth. I could talk about this for hours at end. Insofar as I'm concerned, there's something I really can't put in words. I worked hard on this uh, role, on this character from a linguistic stance, as we worked uh, with Pierre Francesco. He is very good at language, and he also did a lot of work. I was very careful to watch everything he did. He's a great actor, and when you work with such a great actor, all you can do is improve yourself. I'm very grateful to him because he managed to enable me to do something that's very, very difficult. I'm not certain that I would have succeeded alone or single-handed. For me, there's something in this that makes me think about ancient times. What a privilege to explore all these areas which, under normal circumstances, I don't visit, even in my imagination. When you work with a great director and when you have a wonderful story, everything acquires a mythical dimension. I couldn't uh, say all this uh, in any better way. Once I started to construct the character, I realized that there was great love between these two people, and this was based on imagination. Without imagination, you can't really do anything. If you haven't seen someone for years and years, you need to call on your imagination. So I continue to love or to hate that person. It's the same thing when you're talking about a myth, full of all the emotions that you inevitably feel in such a situation. And we didn't have a safety net when we were playing our parts. There was a particularly difficult scene which needed to be shot. 
questo personaggio è stato What I'm trying to say in fact is that this character uh, was something we created together. I didn't create it just by myself. Io non sono napoletano. A lot uh, of uh, things went into this character because he comes from Naples. We managed to stay within uh, uh, this given dimension, and that's something that I will always remember. That is the real reason which makes me want to, to be an actor. I'm here today in Cannes. And uh, with this film, we touched on things that are all linked to childhood. That's how I want to uh, say things, as you can see them in the film. Hello. The film deals with uh, many subjects and many references. There are many different layers in the film. When I hear you all talk about it, you each underscore friendship, love, the semantics, the language. Is there a hierarchy in terms of all these different facets in the film? Nella storia mi, mi, mi sembrava, naturalmente mi ha attratto subito, mi, sono, mi, ha, mi hanno attratto subito degli archetipi, diciamo, de, anche perché certo, naturalmente... What attracted me in the doveva, novel doveva were the cinematographic archetypes. E ci sarebbe dovuto essere the story western, could have been a kind of a thriller or a western. C'era del mito. It goes without saying that was something mythical in this uh, novel in terms of uh, Pier Francesco and Thomas's char Tommaso's characters. This mythology you find in the novel has led us to be like children, Tommaso talked about childhood right away when he was asked the question. One might also say that we depict a, a very specific social reality, which is very real. You have Francesco's character, for example, e a Napoli lavora alla sanità ieri sera who era works in, in Naples in la sanità in e that district allora per dire che someone came to Cannes from, from that della, district della uh, yesterday to see the film sguardo, ecco, su so all this side of the film depicts uh, the actual situation in that district and we kept thinking about all these points uh, when making certain choices. We talked a lot about the city of Naples and uh, the crime rate in Naples. And I wanted to go beyond all that. I didn't want, want to talk only about the camera or the mafia or religion. I wanted to talk about the South the southern part of the world. I wanted to talk uh, about uh, criminal offenses and God. These are the key points in the story which really attracted me. Obviously, you also have this great uh, love story, this great tale of friendship, as Tommaso was saying. This friendship is still so strong 40 years later when so many occasions were missed out on, so many things were not stated, so this love or hatred becomes something absolutely gigantic. If you delve into your childhood memories, you know, of course, that there is no boundary between love and friendship. Our soul is open. We have these passions, and we're not here to defend ourselves. We are defenseless when exposed to strong emotions and such friendships. So these are beautiful characters because they're so very open. 
We're talking about a character who's extremely sensitive. Touching the mother, this physical contact seems to erase the 40 years during which he didn't see his mother. He left his mother when he was very young and sees her again when he's much older. This sensitivity, this dimension, this soul you have in the film, all this attracts me and is interleaved with the mythological dimension which lends itself beautifully to the cinema. Here we're telling a tale which is full of real things and spectators from around the world can identify with this tale. This kind of story happens everywhere, anywhere in the world. And it's the kind of story that's always been told in the cinema. You, you can say this also of the form. There are sequences which are framed in an amazing way. They're almost like a, a picture. At other times, it's almost neorealistic with a camera on a shoulder looking for the reality in the streets of Naples. Allora, il, il mio realismo è venuto a un certo punto è stato molto concreto cioè, ricordo perfettamente il giorno my realism is very down to earth I remember exactly one day when we were preparing we were working hard I had to make certain choices in terms of the setting this is what one always does in the cinema but then I suddenly said to myself well no I'm making a mistake Let's just take our camera and go into this part of Naples, meet the people, uh, meet the people who actually live in the district, see who crosses our path. If you see someone open a door, well, it's at the beginning of the film, you see someone opening a door, people are going out to dinner, they're going to see their families, all these characters one after the other and bit by bit came to participate in the film. That's what uh, people did with neorealism in Italy or with the new wave in France. It's, it's tremendous freedom, in fact. We could just uh, let ourselves be swept away by events. Francesca, Francesco, Pier Francesco, that's what we see in their characters. We just let events uh, guide us in the film. We had our thoughts, uh, we had uh, certain tracks, so to speak, to follow. We knew where we wanted to go with the film, but at the same time, we just let ourselves uh, uh, be uh, led by the hand uh, by spontaneous events. I hope spectators realize this. Of course, we filmed the last scene, which focuses clearly on the theme of a maze. When we shot the last scene, we were lost. We thought, well, why? Maybe this scene should be the conclusion of the film. In the novel by Hermano Rea, we couldn't ask him about the end of the novel because uh, Hermano just left us the book and then went away. The scene in the basilica in the district, well, you can't ask the author about it, so we just proceeded blindfold, so to speak, di pensiero e di costruzione si è com completata una in the actual construction of the film we the film very carefully but uh, just let ourselves be taken by the hand and led by events at the same time 
my question is for Mr. Mario Mar Martoni, Ms. Aurora Quattrochi, Mr. Uh, Pier Francesco Favino. Uh, first of all, con congratulations for the incredible movie. Uh, the scene of Fally bathing his mother was one of the most beautiful scenes I have ever seen in cinema. The w there was... Merci de le signaler. That's true. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of strong feelings involved beside the strong silence. Uh, the scene transported us immediately to our own, li own lives as parents or sons or daughters. Could you tell us a little bit of how did you construct this incredible scene, please? Thank you. Dico io intanto allora la scena si deve all'immaginazione di Ermanno Rea, tanto per cominciare. This scene era una delle immagini springs from Ermanno Rea's imagination. It's one of the strongest images, perhaps, in the novel. That's one of the reasons also why we wanted to make the film. We wanted to depict this specific scene on, on the screen, obviously. Their relationship was absolutely wonderful. Io non le ho parlato di questa scena. When Abbiamo lavorato su altre scene. Siamo arrivati a We all got together. I didn't speak about this scene first of all. We worked on the other scenes and then gradually moved towards the one you mentioned. I'd like to underscore the importance of the work we did with the DOP and others. What counts is the place. It's our immersion in the district, La Sanita. There's a, a butcher's shop in the district. I didn't want the scene to be in half shadow. I didn't want people to see only half of what was there. I wanted them to see everything. There are a lot of nuances. Many different choices had to be made. It's difficult to explain things. But we just uh, let things be and didn't try uh, to contrive anything. I'm 62 years old. My mother died in 2004. I have um, such memories of her illness and everything that moved me so much. I tried to relieve her suffering. This isn't a scene I could have shot at the age of 30. You have to be a bit older to uh, shoot that kind of a scene. And we are craftsmen, of course, when we try to make a film. On a quand même... Oh, no, it's bien. No, I, th I think it's, there, there are many things in the movie that are just archetypical. And um, it's been, at the same time, very easy and very hard to do it. Easy because it's something that is so natural and because of, of, of the incredible actress I've been working with. And, uh, of course, with the direction of Marco, uh, of, uh, Mario, sorry. But... but the thing for me was to, I don't know, to, I, I think that the strength of the, of the scene is because it symbolizes a lot of things. And we all are, as you said, either parents or sons. We, and I, I think that all the movie, in all the movie, there, there are moments like this. There are, I've always envisioned this movie as the journey of a soul more than a man. And I think that this is the soul of everyone here. We all are coming back to something. We all are escaping from something. We all want to get back to our inner self, the most uh, pure, innocent, uh, true self. And you can't do that without washing 
your sins, washing, blessing your belongings, blessing your, your roots, recognizing them, facing them. I can't imagine what it means to, to, to live apart from a mother for 40 years and to feel that there's a secret that maybe she knows, maybe she doesn't. Do you feel guilty? Do you feel, that, do you feel abandoned? How many things? I think that that scene is, in a way, it's the only thing, the only scene that can put together these two worlds that, that have been apart for so long. And it happens with the most simple and at the same time deep uh, way of doing it. Alors, leur tourne, mais je voudrais quand même poser quand même une dernière question. I would like to ask one last question. We have four producers at the table, four production companies got together to finance this film. Is it easy to finance a film like this, uh, given the Italian film industry, which is in economic straits? What's it like? <coughs> Quando hai un, un copione così importante, quando hai un regista when così importante, you have such a, an important un topic and such a talented, important director and actors, everything becomes very easy. Of course, it's not a foregone conclusion, but you can just see the result. I would like Francesco Di Leva to say a few words. He plays a key part in what we were saying earlier on with neorealism. And Francesco, who's an extraordinary actor, is also someone who acts in the theatre, he works in a the theatre in a difficult part of Naples, and he does something similar to the priest in the film. This is a key component of the film, and I'd like Francesco Di Leva to say a few words about this. Thank you, Mario, for giving me the floor and for enabling me to talk about my district in Naples, which resembles La Sanità. When Mario phoned me to talk about this project, I had read the novel, and one of the first things he said to me was that he didn't want a priest, which is easy because I don't know how to pray, but I learned how to pray. I started, I listened very carefully to what Pier Francesco was saying earlier on, and I put myself in a situation that doesn't exist, that totally escapes all of us, and as Mario said, he gave me this part because I'm very active in my district. I resist in this city and I tell things in a very different way. It's different from what people think or know about Naples. A lot has been said about Naples. There's been a lot of ferocious criticism of the city for quite some time. People talk about a very savage, wild city. But in this film, I tried to show how there are people in the city who try to do good. The faithful, what other people are doing every day, good things, so that the city of Naples can breathe. And Father Antonio, that's exactly what he does. Before being a priest, he's just a simple human being. And that's how I decided to uh, betray the character in light of our conversations. There's something I'd like to say to Mario. I'm so pleased that for the very first time 
you were able to uh, show us the bad side of Naples uh, through people who are solitary and alone, people who have a shitty life and they don't live in a palace. They are people sitting in a garden where there are no flowers. They are in parks sitting on broken chairs. To have a woman, they have to pay for it. That's talking about Naples, but that's also a way of loving Naples. This film is a desperate attempt to save the city of Naples. Thank you very much to all of you. The film will be released in France on the 19th of October. They are our protagonists in the film, but they represent our future.